this inspirational moment is brought to you by the Holy Ghost. It's Baptism Sunday. New Life is known for her baptism services. And I was meditating and praying about baptism this week and the Lord showed me something and I have to declare it before we do it. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. John says, I indeed baptize you with water. 63,000. We can count all day. 64,000. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's my privilege. That's my honor. I'm going to baptize you today with water unto repentance. But he that cometh right behind me, after me, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I saw this week the water on fire. Tell your neighbor the fire is coming. I'm closing. Today we walk into a grace to experience again the fire of God. We've seen several fires in scripture Hebrew boys' refusal to align with a system that contradicts their loyalty to God found themselves thrown into a furnace of fire. Seven times exceeding the normal temperature, this fire did not destroy them but only burnt off the bondage that they were in. The Bible says that when he came back, he saw them loosed and praising God in the midst of the fire. There is a fire that comes not to harm you, but to harm what's holding you. You're not here yet. Uh, secondly, uh, the goal that has been exposed to the elements and used in exchange begins to lose its shine and luster. It never loses its value. It just doesn't look as pretty. Oh, glory to God. Uh, you can take a $100 bill and ball it up and stump it and kick it around, and when you unfold it, it's still $100. You think $100 is only $100 when it's a fresh, pretty $100 bill, that sharp one that'll almost give you a paper cut on your finger if you mishandle it. But God says some of you have been handled in ways that you thought caused you to lose your value. But God said to tell you, you're still a $100 bill. I don't care how you've been balled up. I don't care how you've been handled and mishandled. You're still uh, who you are. It is this fire of uh, the gold. This gold is tried in the fire. It is not meant to alter its shape, but to restore its original purity. There is a fire that brings us back to purity. It burns off the things that attached itself to us while we were living life. Mm. It burns off the experiences um, that changed our perspective of ourselves um, while we were going through life. Tell your neighbor there is a fire. Thirdly, the children of Israel are being brought out of Egypt bondage and promise and to a promised land folking, following with milk and honey. Uh, the problem is they're coming out of Egypt and they have to hurry up and get through the Red Sea by a certain time. They have to hurry up and get to where God intends them to get to by a certain time. But if they cannot travel by night, their time is elongated. 
there were no street lights in the wilderness. There were no, that there were no uh, uh, overhead hanging lights in the wilderness. And so if they didn't have some type of illumination at night, they would be restricted to only traveling during the day. And so God sent a pillar of to guide them through the night seasons. Tell your neighbor, your night seasons are all right because God has fire to guide you through it. This fire is not to burn up anything. This fire is not to consume anything. It is only to illuminate your next step. It is only to allow you to move faster than normal time would generally allow. Tell your neighbor, I feel acceleration on me. Since you can't prophesy to them, prophesy to yourself. Um, and tell your neighbor, I feel acceleration on me. Now, what normally is supposed to take me six years, um, I'm getting ready to do it in six months. Um, what would normally take me three years to do, I'm going to do it in three months. Um, I, it used to take me days to forgive. Um, now I forgive in minutes. I forgive in seconds. There's a momentum. There is an acceleration that is coming to my life. Fourthly, Moses is journeying with his flock on the backside of the desert and Midian finds himself at the mountain of God, Horeb. There he sees a bush on fire but not being consumed. This miraculous fire creates a holy place to hear a holy God give holy instructions. Um, can I tell you there's a fire coming in your life um, that is simply designed to get your attention. Mm. And when it gets your attention, out of that fire is going to come the instruction uh, that's going to satisfy your destiny uh, and bring you along in your purpose. Uh, tell your neighbor, I'm about to get on track. I'm about to get on track. Uh, I've been wandering in the wilderness too long. I'm about to get on track. Uh, I've been trying to figure out life for too long. I'm about to get on track. I've been trying to understand everything that's happened in my life for too long. I'm about to get on track. There is a fire that's coming to give me instruction. Come now to the text. John is in the wilderness baptizing people as a testimony of their acceptance and submission to the kingdom. John is not baptizing them into Jesus Christ. John is baptizing them into the kingdom. Remember John's sermon, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so he's out here in the wilderness, dressed in his unique attire, baptizing them into the kingdom. This experience of baptism was designed to conclude on fire. It was designed to end with fire. It was not really meant for there to be two weeks or four months in between the water and the fire. It was really designed to happen right after one another. And I came to tell somebody as I get ready to head to the water now that God's going to do some things in the water by fire. God said, I'm going to catch the water on fire. And I'm going to cause you to go down wet and come up on fire. You're going to go down and die under that water, but you're coming up straightway. And when you come up, and when you come up out of that water, you're going to be on fire fire. The question I have now is um, how do we get to the fire? Hmm? How do we get to the fire? Well, let's look at five steps and we're out of the way. Number one is confession. Everybody say confession. I'm on my way to the fire, but I first got to make a confession. What is my confession? My confession is I need a change. I'm sick of life as usual. I'm sick of days as usual. I need a change. I've tried everything, and I've tried just about everybody, but I need a change in my life. Um, there are three times of change. Three Three types of change. There is transformational change. This is the confession, and it says, I am wrong. 
You will never be brought into the kingdom until you come to understand that your life outside of the kingdom is wrong. I don't care how much you've justified it and I don't care how familiar it is to you and how many generations before you have lived like that. You got to come to the place where you say this is wrong. This is out of order. It is this transformational confession that changes my form. And then there is a transitional confession. Um, this transitional confession says, um, I was wrong. It says, my error has been my error um, and I accept it was error. We got to be delivered from self-justification. We got to be delivered from justifying our attitude and justifying our conduct. And well, yeah, but if you hadn't done this, I wouldn't have done that. No, that's justification. You got to come to the place where you say, I need a change because I am wrong. And I am wrong because I've been wrong. But I'm ready to be right. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a translatable confession that says I want to be right this confession is focused on the future it keeps my hands clean and keeps my heart pure this confession says I choose Jesus now 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 I know it's very foundational and boring to you but choosing Jesus means I choose his way not just his blessings it means I accept his way of dealing with things as the right way for me. I cannot accept it for the world. I have to accept it for me. So if he says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, then I accept that as right for me. You can argue all day long. My confession has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with me. And it is transformational, transitional, and translatable. After confession, secondly, we come into repentance. If I've confessed that I need change, repentance brings me into the change. But here's the significance of repentance. It is not feeling sorry that's conviction repentance is not what you feel repentance is what you do repentance says I change I changed my mind I changed my mind which means repentance requires me to call sin sin Now here's where we struggle because repentance defies justification. Repentance makes me say the thing I'm turning from is wrong. It is sin. If you cannot call it sin, you are not repenting. You're just delaying. But you got to call the thing you're turning from sin for you. To him that knoweth to do right and doeth not. To him it is sin. There is a sin according to the Bible and there is a sin according to your heart. So I got to call it a sin. Ah, so the Lord told me to quit cussing. Now I got to call cussing a sin for me. That's rough because now what's put on trial in my future behavior is not my conduct but my love. So now I'm wrestling with if I cuss again, do I love him more than cussing? Why do I keep choosing profanity over Christ? Because I didn't call it sin. It's tight, but it's right. Why am I still hitting this blunt? 
and trying to cover it up before I get to church because I haven't called it sin. I haven't identified it as a sin for me. There are some sins that is sin for you that is not sin for me. Stop comparing your salvation because I can't get you in the gate and you can't get me in. We all got to answer for our Sin for me is that which juxtaposes me from my purpose. Anything that detours me from what God, y'all ain't saying nothing, from what God has ordained for my life is sin for me. So if I'm going to repent, I first got to call it a sin. It is calling sin, sin, and turning from it in your life. It says no more. It is a decision. It is not a dance. It is not a he-ba-ba. It is not chills up and down your spine. It is not somebody laying you out on the floor. It is not your feeling a certain way. It is an intellectual, intentional decision. It is the rejection and abandonment of my old master. Who is my old master? Doubt, fear, and unbelief. Everything I did in sin was because I doubted, I feared, and I didn't believe. All three, of them, all three are the cause of any sin that I have ever committed and will ever commit. Which means the answer is faith. Hope and love. These three remain. So as long as I walk in faith, have an expectation, and walk in love, I will not live in doubt, fear, and unbelief. I don't fight doubt, fear, and unbelief. I increase faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love handles doubt, fear, and unbelief. And I tell you, I'm going, you are not strong enough to fight doubt fear or unbelief. It'll leave you and come back another way. You have to let the elements of God fight the elements of the enemy. So strengthen yourself in God and then resist the enemy. And your strength will make the enemy flee. Number three is conversion. Conversion is the work of Christ to accept you into his body and to come into your heart. Conversion is an exchange. He comes in and he lets you in. He comes in and he lets you in. Yet it is no longer I, but he that came in. So I am now possessed by he that came in. I now submit to he that came in. And he comes in with a different mindset than the one I had. He comes in with a different modus operandi than the one I've had. He comes in saying, no, let's do it this way. And you say, no, because I've always done it this way. He says, old things are past. Look, I'm your newness. Walk with me. Walk with me. Don't answer that. Let's keep moving. Don't fight that. Let's keep moving. Don't even respond to that. Let's keep it moving. Embrace right there. Yep, yep, embrace, embrace. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I know, I know what they said, but embrace it. No, 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 forgive. I know they didn't ask you to, but forgive them. I know they don't even care if you do or not, but forgive them. I'm not trying to deliver them. I'm trying to deliver. Conversion is the new governor and his mandates and requirements. I've got a new walk. Glory to God. I got a new talk. 
I sing a new song and I dance a new dance. I don't want any more what I wanted. I want now what I've never wanted before. I've been changed. Conversion is not your work. It is the work of your submission. One more time. You cannot convert you. You must submit and be converted. Repent, Acts 3.19, and be converted. I got to turn from it and be changed. All right? Now, this change, can I minister for a minute? This change is your emergence or your emancipation. It is the presentation of you in new life. Oh, glory to God. You now get to come forth new. This new is the beginning of the new that you're getting ready to be. You are fully new, but not fully new yet. You have been made new, but you haven't come into the new that has come into you yet. Paul said that I might be apprehended of that of which I have apprehended. I got to get what's in me now. I got to get in it. Do you see that? I got to come into what's come in me. Otherwise, I will not be baptized in it. It'll coexist. And one of the challenges of the modern day church is too much of God is coexisting with us. We're not dead to it. We're not submitted to it. We're not yielded to it. We argue with it. We justify with it. We tell God who else is doing what. So don't tell me not to do it because they're doing it. We get into comparative salvation. And both y'all going to hell. But why would you want to compare yourself with somebody who on their way to hell? That You're not my model. Because you slipping and tipping and sipping does not give me the right. I don't care where you preaching. I don't care how many came to your meeting. I don't care how many you get on a live. I don't care how many you can warrant. If you ain't living holy, you are not my model. See, you're impressed with numbers. God is not. Everything big is not healthy. Do you think the bigger you are, the healthier you are? When you get big overnight, something is generally wrong. He says there's an emergence. This emergence commands me. Watch this. You're going to like this. The grace to grow into what's in me. I have a grace to be sanctified. I am sanctified, being sanctified, to be sanctified. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the sanctification process, so please be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. Well, well how I know you being sanctified is not for you to know. Because you can't see my heart unless God show it to you. And God judges the heart. So you don't know that the last thing that came out on me, first of all, was 30 years ago. Secondly, it was not in my heart. It was something that was blown way out of proportion. But because you saw it on ticking and talking, you think it's truth. TikTok got folk dead who living. We're sorry to tell you about it. You're on there crying. Oh, my God, when did they die? They're not dead. It's a lie. Your source is not reputable.
He says that some things are falling the floor is not going to get you delivered from. Now, I'm a proponent of instant deliverance, and I believe it can happen. It does happen. You, I'm, I'm laid hands on people, and they've been instantly delivered. But there's some people who had to grow. <laughs> they had to work out their own soul's salvation with fear and trembling. And my job was not to be their deliverer. My job was to be their coach. Keep failing and keep getting up. Keep messing up and keep getting up. I know, I know, I know. Get up again, get up again. I know, get up here and dance again. I know, get up here and give again. I know, lift your hands and praise again. Because guilt never delivered anybody. Guilt locks you into the thing you're guilty over. So it says there's an emergence. Tell your neighbor, you came faster than me. You came forth faster than me. Some of your minds were somewhere else. You came forth faster than me. But I'm, I'm on my way. I, I'm, I'm not on your level. I'm not on your level, but I'm not going to feel bad that I'm not on your level. I'm on Jesus' level, and I know he's working with me because the things I used to do. See, here's the real thing. Most people haven't been delivered from the depths that you had to be brought out of. I wish you'd look at somebody and say, you don't know me. You look at this dance and you think you know something. But if you knew the generational stuff I had to be delivered from. Stuff I never did but is in my bloodline to do. Uh, stuff, stuff. Uh, you listening to my song and you think I'm real spiritual and you admiring me because you don't know. Your best friend amongst your brethren is ignorance. Stop trying to know everything they've done. I don't want to know. Because now I got to wrestle against my own flesh to not look at you different. Now I got to wrestle against me to think that maybe what you said was really what you wanted and it wasn't really a Freudian slip. Now I got to go through. No, no, no. Don't tell me nothing. Just leave me at God brought you from a mighty long way. Can I tell you a secret? I'm going to the pool because it's fire in the water. Uh, can I tell you a secret? The only time you expose your full deliverance is with somebody else who's in your current, who's in your old bondage. Now, a converted hoe can deliver an old hoe. But a converted hoe don't need to be talking to a virgin about their whoredom. It's just not going to help. I had to put it on the bottom level. I'm sorry. A rolling stone can get, a can get somebody else delivered who will hang their hat and that became their home. But if you're 16 and I'm testifying of my rolling stone days, I'm only equipping you with temptation. Learn who to testify to. Some of us testify like that because we're still proud of it. We wish we were still there. Ooh, I used to tear a pole up. Nah. Yo, yo, and someone got that Medea spirit. We're just so proud of what we used. I used to get this drop. Because we're really wishing secretly that we could still do it. You ain't delivered. You're just too old. 
It ain't that you don't want to, you can't. That's why you got to be careful with some of the older saints because some of them ain't really delivered. That's why they don't like you because you find like they used to be. They don't like you because you got legs like they used to have. They don't like you because they now got a, a Tupac and you got your six pack and they like, mm -mm. guess you think you getting all the women. No, where'd that come from? You looking at you, not me. We got to grow. Some things we got to grow into. We got to grow into. How long did it take you to say yes to God on that level? Don't stress the length of time. Celebrate the fact that the yes came. Tell your neighbor, I know I've grown because I've told God yes in some areas. I've been telling him no in for a long time. I, I know I've come up because I, you know, I didn't say nothing yesterday when I should have had. In fact, I went home uh, biting my tongue, bit my tongue while I was eating that hamburger because of the stuff I wanted to say that was still on my tongue. And I thought it was me. I done bit my tongue. Should have said it and get it off my. No, no, you didn't say it, and you need to throw you a party for growth. Yeah. Tell somebody, I know I've grown. I'm going to get me a homemade donut. What, what's that place y'all went the other day? Sublime Donuts. I'm going to get me. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do it, Jesus. Hold me, Jesus. Keep me in the water. Let me drink the water too, Lord. Help me, Lord. Finally, I'm gone. Finally, I'm gone. We're going to the water. There must be, number one, a confession. There must be change. It must be acknowledged. And it must be declared. Stop keeping secrets with your soul. Number two, there must be repentance. You got to call the sin a sin. And you got to deal with calling it a sin. If every time you listen to that, you end up doing that. And if I want to be delivered, I got to stop just calling that the sin. I got to call that the sin for me. That's why that's, you know, some of you old folk, you couldn't do Luther, Teddy. You couldn't do them because they enticed you to do stuff. Woke stuff up in you. And the minute you saw him or her, you were like, come here. Let me talk to you over here. Come on downstairs. We're going to go in the basement. It's a little more privacy. We're going to talk down there. Rats running around, but we're going to talk down here because... Ain't nobody down. In fact, about 8 o'clock, come back because everybody leaving. We're going to talk because uh, somebody been talking to me. They've been singing that sin all in my ear. Now it's in my heart and I got to do it. I got to got to's. I got to do it. I don't even want to do it, but I got to now because I'm woke up. See, no, 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 no. Y'all don't want to be real because you know the rule is if you wake him up, you got to put him to sleep. No, 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 no. You got to call a sin a sin. Then you got to let him convert you. You got to let him convert you. You got to embrace a new governor, a new Lord. Don't just let him be your savior. He got to be your Lord. He got to be able to tell you what to do. He got to be able to tell you what to wear. He got to be able to tell you how you fix your face. He got to be able to tell you, don't put that on. He got to be able to tell you, nah, that's not for you. He's got to be able to tell you, don't get them lines cut in your head, sir. That's the spirit. He's got to be able to tell you stuff. And you listen. And you don't tell him, well, ain't nothing wrong with this. Everybody else doing it. Why can't I? must be conversion there must be emergence I got to come forth at some point 
My test, that's what today is about. I'm testifying. That water not saving you. If you ain't saved before you get in it, you just been dipped in water. That's a testimony. That's a declaration to the community at large that I've been changed. How many times should I be baptized? As many times as you've been changed if you want to. If you get changed every year and you keep coming back to Christ, keep coming to the water. At some point it's going to stick. Well, I don't believe in baptizing people more than once because if you didn't get it the first time, you ain't going to get it. Nah, that's not the mind of God. I'll take it down three times today if you need to because I just want you to get it. I'll hold you down under the water. Get it. Get it. Die. Say yes. Well, you can't say it. Kick three times and that'll be yes. Finally, there is a submergence, allowing the spirit of Christ in you to fill you up. In Christ, Colossians 1, dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When you accept Christ into your life, you have the Holy Ghost. You're just not full of him. He is present. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it does not come from above you. It comes from within you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers that's flowing up. All right? Now the Lord showed me this, and you can be mad at me if you like. If you only get filled to the level of your mouth, your mind is still in warfare. If you get filled and, and that spirit well up in you and you start feeling it, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, and come up to you, and everybody stop because you're speaking in tongues. Your mind ain't changed yet. Your mind not full. You got to let this mind be in you. How do you get it in you? You don't study and memorize. You allow the spirit of that mind to well up in you to the point that it controls and manages your mind. So it's got to come higher than your mouth. We need to do more than speak with other tongues. Once, and I'm done, once we are submerged, the word baptism comes from the Greek word baptismos. It does not mean to sprinkle. It means to submerge. So I'm not going to sprinkle water on you. I can do that in here. But that ain't baptism by definition. Well, I know other churches that sprinkle. I don't have nothing to do with that. I'm not pastor of that church. I'm not bishop of those churches. I'm just trying to tell you that the word means, well, I tithe 5%. You're lying. Because tithe is 10. You can't tithe less than a 10. Or it's not tithe. You can't sprinkle me and call it baptism. Because that's not submerging. I got to go down. I get nervous when I baptize and you don't go fully down. Because then I'm about to have to do it again. Because you got to go all the way down. If you ain't want your hair wet, you should have bought a, a do-rag or something. A swimming cap. But you got to go down. Allowing this spirit of Christ to fill you up. It is the release of your new spirit in you to you. 
it's coming from within. If I can get you to get that, that fire will burn strong. It's coming from within you. To the end of not just language change, but mind change. It is unlocking and releasing fruit and gifts. After this, the text said, put it back up for me. And I want to show you this and we go. 3 and 11, Matthew. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. How long is cometh after me? How long is that? Does that mean I can take you down and by the time I get you up, he will have taken you down again already? And before you get out the water, you on fire? Can't it happen right behind? Can't you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the water? It doesn't mean the water gave you the baptism. It means the fire was in the water. In the times we're living in, we need to come out the water speaking. We need to come out the water refilled. We need to see folk come up out the water and want to get in ourselves. We need to be going and finding a t-shirt. I said, I may have to drive home with wet pants, but I'm getting in this fire. We cannot afford to wait for three weeks of tarrying to receive the baptism. He says, he that cometh after me. I saw after me right after me. I saw after me right after me. I saw right after me, right after me. It ain't much gap between me and him. It ain't much gap between me and the fire. In fact, it looks like I'm giving you fire. I ain't giving you fire. The fire is just so close that by the time I touch you, fire's already on you because it's coming after me. I'm going to give you the water. Jesus is going to give you the fire. Lift your hands and say, Jesus, we welcome you into the water. Put your hands down, I'm done. The fire seals. It maintains the purity of power and the sanctification of substance. The fire also strengthens. It strengthens you for service. And it strengthens the ground for fertility. The most fertile ground you can find is ground that has been baptized in fire. That ground produces instantaneously. I want to tell you, after a baptism, you should produce immediately. You should be a production. You should be productively amazing. Because you just caught on fire. You just caught on fire. And your ground is the nutrients are being developed and everything wrong is being burnt out. So the first baptism in the days of Noah was water. But the baptism coming after that is fire. He keeps doing what he's done to show you what he's doing. Because what he's doing is what he's done and what he's about to do is what he's doing which is what he's already done. He doesn't change. He keeps doing the same thing over and over again. 
if you figure out what he's done, you can know what he's doing. God is not a mystery. He just must be revealed by the Spirit. All of my candidates for baptism, will you come with us? All of those who are being baptized today, come stand at this altar. I'm very proud of you. Those of you who is your first time, those of you who are humbling yourself to come again, I'm very proud of you. First thing I need you to do is make sure you've accepted Christ into every part of your heart. Check your heart, examine your heart, and make sure, sure you've surrendered your whole heart to him. He wants it all. It is the part we withhold that is the part we currently are dealing with. Give him your all. Confess that part. Tell him, yes, there. Go ahead, go ahead. My heart says yes in this area. This is my struggle. This is my battle. And I confess it. I do not hide it. This is my battle. Now I repent for it. God, this battle is sin. Even my making myself okay in it is sin for me. And I surrender to you. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me from this sin. I'm not thinking of sins I don't commit. I'm thinking of the ones I do. Wash me of this. I turn from it. I make a conscious decision to not carry myself like that anymore. Change me, oh God. Let conversion take place in me. And I shall come forth as pure gold in Jesus' name. Those standing, please answer. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord? and your Savior. Do you believe that Jesus is coming soon for a church without spot or wrinkle? Is it your intention to be caught up with him when the trump sounds and the dead in Christ rise first? Do you mean to be a part of the caught away church? Will you live for Jesus for the rest of your days? then based on your confession of faith, we will baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, that your sins might be forgiven and that the fire of God might cause you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name.